Café Talk. Café Talk often starts with, you know. You know, we are Abbott. We are a global technology provider and we belong to the PFL group. Um, and we have our headquarters in Belgium and we have an office in Barcelona and we have an own meetings and events center called Wurt International Meetings and Events Center or WIMAC. And guess what? We are at WIMAC. This is Abbott's brand new hybrid streaming and recording studio. And my name is Evelyn. Welcome to Abbott's bar session. But before we move on, I would like Kate from IAC to welcome you too and to bring on the housekeeping notes. Kate, are you there? Thanks, so. Evelyn, for that. Um, a very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's great to see so many of you uh, joining us today. Uh, our session today is with Abbott uh, at the bar, something a little bit different for all of you. Um, now, Abbott's our new technology partner uh, for Europe. Um, and they're going to tell us a little bit more about the multi-hub concept that we'll be using uh, for the Knowledge Festival uh, later this year. Uh, now, just quickly for those on the call that perhaps don't know me, uh, my name's Kate Bacon. I'm the Customer Relations and Events Manager for IAC, uh, based out of the UK. Uh, and for today's session, as I say, a little bit different. We're going to ask you to keep your cameras on and your microphones off. Um, but should you have a question at any point uh, during the session for Evelyn or the team, please uh, raise your hand uh, with using the bottom of the screen um, icon and the Abbott team will open your microphone. Recording in progress. Um, now, as always, just so you all know, we are recording today's session, uh, so we will send you a recording afterwards, but it will be available on the IAC YouTube channel and the IAC webinar on demand page. So I'm very excited and delighted uh, to hand over to Evelyn and the team uh, for today's session. Over to you, Evelyn. Thank you, Kate. And last but not least, we have today my colleague Jochen, our bartender. Hello, Jochen, and welcome. What's thanks. up, Jochen? Thanks, Evelyn. I'm very, very fine. Thank you. Thank you all, uh, dear online participants and our distinguished bar guests. Welcome, everybody. And let us take you all today on a safe journey to the hybrid meeting landscape of today. But first, let me introduce you to our bar piano player, Birger. Birger and I, we go way back and we conquered a lot of stage together. But today, he is my, our, my piano player for this fantastic bar session. So, let's loosen our tongues and sing along together. You will find the lyrics on your paper on, on stage or on screen. Okay, Birger, take off. Live. Just call Abbott and not the cow. Awesome. Thank you, Jochen. You're welcome. Fantastic. After a few more beers, I'm sure we will all sing along. Um, about the format, hybrid, multi-hub or multi pot meetings. Abbott, in fact, delivered its first hybrid event in 2000. And in 2014, or almost 15, we connected four hubs. A hub in Buenos Aires, one in Seoul, one in Hong Kong, and the moderator was in London. And so there was a 12-hour time difference. And so there was only two hours of overlap for these physicians in those four hubs to connect with each other. And Abbott flew, in fact, men's with suitcases, within the suitcases, robot cams like we have here, multiple today, push-to-talk microphones. And when all these men's and suitcases were in place in the four hubs, bang, magic happens. But I must admit, um, really, to make this unique and advanced format of the multi-hub or the multi-pot meeting work and happen, you need a good crisis, like the crisis we're all facing today. Unfortunately, um, but what we have seen is a good thing of the crisis that we are now much more relaxed with going digital. I'm feeling much more relaxed with standing here and talking to cameras and to live people here at the bar. Um, so I hope you too. Um, but what about um, hybrid context and a hybrid or multi-hub meeting? Are we relaxed with that format too? Maybe I should ask an expert. 
Um, let's ask Mark Cooper from IAC. Mark, are you there? Yes, I am, Evelyn. How are you? Good. Welcome. Thank you. And nice to be here with all the IAC European members also. Thrilled to be joining the session. Already, it is so different. And I am transfixed on Jochen's ability to pour countless amounts of beer while we're live. <laughs> I'll do my best, Mark. Let Thank you, Jochen. But, um, Evelyn, as you say, you have a steep history way before the pandemic in terms of uh, Multipod and its concept. And where IAC is at the moment is we are an organisation that is built on 35 years of having a strong um, inclination to come together as a global community of leaders to share ideas and to learn from each other. And it has been an incredibly difficult 18 months where we haven't been able to do that. However, where we are now, we are just two weeks away from our first live conference in the US, where like the Knowledge Festival in October for the European event, we will be bringing together not one live group of IAC members, but we will be bringing together three or four live groups plus our, vir our virtual group as well. So it's such a special moment as we return and get face-to-face -face in meetings. Now, none of this would have been possible without having a really strong expert partner and production partner. And as you'll learn today, and as you'll learn in the Knowledge Festival when you attend, um, there is a rebalancing of where you need that extra expertise. And Abbott and PFL are exactly the right partner for us as we take that transformation from being very effective analog meeting experts to pioneering digital meeting experts. So I'm excited about what we have uh, in store in October, Evelyn, and by the partnership with Abbott PFL. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, and I'm sure right, those um, four IAC venues, eh, they will provide us with the um, very good internet facilities. Um, and yes, Abbott will fill, up, fill in the gaps of equipment and come on to these four hubs with their suitcases um, and with their engineers. Um, and even for events, eh, we will make sure that all parties are, are involved. Eh? We will connect with local IT from the hubs, with AV people, with your logistical staff, and we will make sure and coordinate eh, that all four hub rooms, they have the right camera table position. Um, we will also um, color up eh, the, the backdrops eh, um, because a splash of color eh, really makes a difference. Eh? Um, and you notice eh, my colorful trousers, eh, so I also um, did my best today um, to really um, bring up some creativity and colorful backgrounds. Um, we will also communicate with all IAC venues up front in several conference calls and also bring on board um, all of the facilitators and the speakers. Um, besides the right equipment, we will also have um, an on-site Abbott team in those four hubs. Um, we work eh, with um, international multi-hub engineers that come from all over the world and Europe. Um, and they are most experienced eh, and really will make your event mark shine. Um, Mike, why not um, see if we have online in the Zoom connection one or more of these uh, hubs that will um, partner with us on October 22nd? Evelyn, a uh, great way, and I would like to open up in the order of those that are not uh, enjoying themselves on holiday at the moment. I know some in Europe absolutely deservedly are, but um, hello from the UK. If you're from the UK, you're connected to Warwick conferences or indeed just the pod in general representing the UK, um, please do bring your camera on. I'll say hello from Sweden and welcome those from Sweden again from our host venue, uh, Skogsholm and Vic, or from those members that are in Sweden and connected to the pod. Please turn your cameras on. And of course, Proust from Denmark. I know we have Marlena and others uh, from the host property uh, from Rundstegard. Uh, please do join the camera. And then finally, our North Sea hub. 
Sante from France, any that are uh, again connected to uh, the wonderful Les Fontaines uh, in Chantilly Chateau that will be our home for the North Sea Hub. Again, please cameras on, microphones on, we would love to hear from you. So we okay, give them a moment okay. to join. If, is there anybody from the hubs that uh, can switch on cameras and microphones and just say hello to us? Hello from Denmark. Hi, Denmark. Welcome. Ah, Marlena, hello. Yes. That's nice. Yes. Well, not to see myself, we but the thing working. <laughs> And do we have Peter as well, who is representing the North Sea Hub? I heard that Peter from Brussels may be joining us as well today. Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to be with you. Hello. Hello, Peter. Wonderful. Well, I think we have two of our hubs here, at least, uh, Evelyn. So that's great. Um, and really, you know, how do we feel about staging an IAP multipod meeting? I'll ask Peter or Marlena, who have both been involved in, uh, from a board perspective, deciding to do this strategically through to um, our planning and arrangements for multipod. Do you guys feel nervous or in safe hands or excited? I feel um, excited and Safe hands and a little nervous. <laughs> a little nervous is good. Yes, because I have to facilitate it, Mark. So, um, yes. Yes, you do. Yes. You are our pod so, facilitator. Yes, yeah, so that's my first time for doing facilitating. And how about you, Peter? Hybrid. Yeah. How do you yeah, feel, Peter? I'll, uh, I'll, about I'll it? echo Marlene here. Um, it's very exciting, but I'm sure that uh, everything will work out fine. And I think it is a great opportunity. You know, we absolutely wanted to come back face to face. Um, but then here also, you know, should there still be travel restrictions, then um, you know, it, it's very good to hear that uh, that members can also uh, call in virtually. Um, so yeah, something for everyone, and um, let's let's make this a big success. But I feel very confident. Well, that's uh, great to hear, Marlena, and I think Peter sums it up. And I've had so many of these conversations, but I'll make a reference to what Peter said right at the end there. There is still a lot of unknown out there. And the one thing for IAC that multi taking the multi-location, multi-part approach does is it allows us to factor in some of the unknowns that are absolutely going to be in play. If we put all of our eggs in one basket and went live in one location, um, and took the risk, then there's a very good chance of failure. By spreading that risk, by making it more accessible, which we'll talk about later, it increases our chances tenfold that we can stage and bring people back live. And we don't have to switch very quickly and in a very costly way back to an alternative because of those unknowns in the future. But one of the biggest challenges that I would say is faced is faced when you are running venues around the world is there are so many offers out there so many let's say experts that say they can offer hybrid technologies or, or IT companies that say that they can stage these types of meetings but it was critical for IAC that we absolutely had the partnership with Abbott uh, here in Europe because we knew have its credentials at delivering these way before the pandemic. Uh, and we've seen it happen very successfully uh, just a couple of months ago when we ran an event in Europe for MPI in five locations. So I am just excited now, Evelyn. I'm not so worried. Good. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, do we have um, any other questions from the online participants? Is Cyril um, online? No? Um, okay, maybe a question then um, from here, from the stage. Uh, maybe Jochen. Um. Yeah. I just received a, a text message and um, it was, with how many technicians are we on site in the hubs? Okay, good question, Jochen. Um, I think maybe that's a question that can be addressed by our multi-hub director, Paul, who is also the director of Abit Bar Session. 
So we will ask him to step a little bit out of his comfort zone um, and to take the question, Paul, with how many technicians do we come on site in a one hub when, for example, delivering the project for Mark in October 22nd? Yeah, that's a good question. As you see here, this is the main hub, the studio. Uh, we are with a lot more technicians here that, uh, than when we will uh, do this at your place. Typically, two persons, two technicians, depending on the size of the, of, of, of the project, uh, of the hub, uh, will cover most things. So um, let's say if you have 30 people on site or, or uh, two technicians can do that. If you have less, maybe 10, maybe one technician can do that. If you have a 100, maybe uh, three technicians you need, depending on uh, what you want to do and uh, how many people you are. Thanks, Paul. I'm sure, Mark, eh, you look forward to collaborating with Paul on October 22nd event. We certainly do. And Paul, we've been working with you on two projects now, and uh, you are a consummate expert. So uh, the other point that I would like to make as well is that as you'll experience your experience in today, being with a strong technology provider is one part of it. But being connected to a creative production partner as the same group makes all the difference and that's why we're having a beer at the bar today and not just uh you know looking at a white background although i appreciate i'm not at the bar and i have got a white background but i certainly have the beer today to be able to make it my bar but um, that's really important uh, i believe that you get strong production and strong technology providers coming together and I love it, eh, Mark, the way I'm connected with you, the way I'm connected here with the on-site and in-person participants, and I'm the way I'm connected eh, with the online participants in the um, camera mosaic. And we can all see each other, we can all hear each other, we can interrupt each other at any time, eh? there is no delay, and it feels like being all in the same room, in fact. Um, so I'm longing already yet to your multi-hub event in October. Uh, I feel like I need another beer. <laughs> Maybe Jochen, can you help me out? Yes, of course, Evelyn. But first things first, let me brighten you up a little bit with, an, with a, another song. Life, online or hybrid, these are the formats you need. To connect people, but you really don't know how. Just call Abbott and, and not the cow. cow. Thanks a lot, Birger. And as a fantastic musician, I think you always also are a perfect bartender, aren't you? That's sadly true, yes. Okay, please follow me and give me some lessons in how to. Now, Jochen, you're in luck. The perfect pint. From all the degrees I received, the. Beer mastery is the one I'm most proud of, so okay. I will explain you. First of all, we need a clean glass. We need to rinse it, we need to clean it. Then you open the draft in one fluent movement. You lose a little bit in the beginning, an angle of 45 degrees. Let it go a little bit down to make some head. And immediately remove the foam, because the little bells you see, that's the CO2, they give you the headache in the morning. So now, normally, if we have a, a little bit of water, we clean the glass and we put it in front of the logo to the customer. Thank you. Please. Can you give me another one, please? For sure. Yep. Thank you. So the same, open, lose a little bit, 45 degrees. Just to see you weren't lucky. Nah. Okay. And now remove the foam. And now we have the perfect beer. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Birger. You're welcome. And as you can see, Mark, this is how we Belgians do it. Let's see if I can manage that 45 <laughs> degrees. Yeah. But let's see. We also have some very fine bar guests. And I, uh, you want another one? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> and I think Shit. you might have a question for us. Yeah, I I, uh, I see you guys are still uh, um, you know way ahead and and you keep innovating because I see some interesting stuff happening on our screen here in the studio. 
and we had the multi the, the multi image mosaic from zoom in the background so how do you do this uh, uh, switching between pictures it's a very nice uh, visual I effect that i see how does that happen how does that happen that's a very good question actually and i think that's a perfect question for our director paul yes uh, martin uh, good question uh, yes so Everybody's familiar with uh, the typical Zoom and WebEx uh, views and teams. Uh, now, uh, for two of our speakers that are joining us now here is um, uh, Mark and uh, later on Michael. They're actually connected through another system uh, which uh, delivers more uh, higher quality. Uh, and that we uh, put back into the Zoom or a, a webcast so people can watch that in a higher quality. That's it. Thank you, Paul. Back to you, Jochen. Okay. Um, all of those, these things, <laughs> thanks a lot. But first things first. Um, all these things are, Shit. reminds me to this big beer guru, Michael, Michael Jackson. And before, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know why, but isn't there anybody who can um, help me a little bit? Is there a Michael in this room? I don't know. Michael, Michael, where are you? Michael. Coming to you live from the UK, oh. Jochen. And I can't let you get away with all that singing. I've got to sort of say good afternoon, good morning to everyone who's watching us now. It's kind of, you know, that singing was fantastic. But But here we go. It's... You know, you want singing, you know, Michael Jackson's going to deliver you some singing. You need to connect to people, but you really don't know how. Just call me your best MC and let me show you how. Dear Th me. Thanks a lot, Michael. That was show marvelous. You up a little bit, if I may. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who haven't met me, my name is indeed Michael Jackson. Um, and it's my privilege to be acting as the uh, overall facilitator when we get together for our uh, our phenomenal day on October the 22nd, the IAC Knowledge Festival's Innovation Lab. And I'm coming to you live from the UK, so I'll be joining from Warwick. And I know already that many of you watching from around the world, it's, it's so lovely to see everyone hooked up in the ways that they are. You know, we've had Bermuda on, we've had Sweden, Denmark and France. Thank you for the beer, by the way. Danish beer is always my absolute favorite. Uh, even though my wife doesn't like me drinking this because she says it has a terrible effect on me. I love the effect that it has on me. But um, going back to the countries that are there, nice to see so many friendly faces. And, you know, one or two of you I know very well. I saw uh, online there Agnes Geo over in Belgium. Hello, Agnes. How lovely to see you um, and all of you that I'm looking forward to meeting um, as we move through uh, what promises to be on October 22nd, a really superb day. You know, we're going to be talking about the new normal, I think, overall as well. And I know that's a phrase that many people kind of worry about. You know, is there ever going to be a normal ever again, depending on where you're coming from around the country at the moment or around the world at the moment? And sometimes the phrase new normal, a bit like Zoom fatigue, is a bit overused. You know, Zoom is only causing fatigue when it's used badly, not with the brilliance of Abbott bringing you a multi-hub scenario. And the new normal, let me just explain about that, because as a facilitator and a change expert, this is something I'm going to be talking about quite strongly um, at the overall function on October 22nd. You see, in many respects, what we have to be aware of is that although things will never be the way they were ever again, and we're living in more change than you could possibly imagine right now, we as humans alive today have seen more change than any other generation that's ever lived. And we're going to be moving into a new normality very shortly. One where business needs to have purpose. It needs to be inspiring. It needs to be stimulating and be exceptionally relevant. And the biggest way for business to achieve that in this day and age right now is through collaboration. And I guess collaboration is the overall exclamation mark. And we'll be talking about all of these aspects and how we jointly can create in our uh, get together from all these hubs around around Europe. We're going to be talking about how we create the new normal 
for ourselves inside the IAC fraternity. So if I can just go over to the next slide, I think one of the most important questions that we can ask right now in this day and age is this one. When the pandemic is over, will your customers be interacting with you the way they were before it began? And I'm pretty certain the answer to that question is no. And it's probably the most important strategic question that we should or could be asking ourselves right now. Maybe you want to take a note of that anyway. You know, just think about that as we run up now to what promises to be a really engaging multi-hub session on October 22nd. When this pandemic is over, will customers be interacting with you the way they were before it began? And if we move to the next slide, let me just explain that in our world right now of conferencing and meetings, I think that the world is going to look very, very different indeed. Not only is this taster of an online hybrid scenario very strategically important to us, but we've got to understand now that the world of conferencing and eventing, even before the pandemic, was starting to feel dull, it was starting to feel ordinary, and the phrase delegate fatigue may well have been something that you had experienced or heard of or indeed seen happening live. I believe that what we need to do, and I hope I'm qualified to say so, by the fact that I've spoken at over 2,700 conferences in some 46 countries worldwide, is that we need to pre-fuel our events and conferences and gatherings now with an awful lot of excitement. We need to have an engagement strategy. We need to use proper teaser materials. We even need to activate the delegate voice well in advance. At the functions themselves, we need to ignite audience engagement with impact and connection, building trust between ourselves as a platform, as an audience, as a conference, and making sure that we're all engaged and embedded together. It does take involvement and wisdom and an awful lot of data to do that. And by using delegate engagement live during the sessions, as we will be doing in our hubs, I think what we need to do is start to think together about how we create the future of what our industry looks like. You know, it's all about short based video at the end now, taking things away from the events that can post accelerate the value, if you will. Videos, infographics, all of those things, because the event shouldn't just end when the banners get lowered and the delegates start going home and we begin to add up the bar bill overall. So the key things that we're going to be focusing on inside that IAC meeting on October 22nd are the technologies that we need for the future. We need to look at the environment that we're in and that we're operating within overall as well. We're going to be talking long and hard about your meeting space design, because again, it can't just be pile them in high and turn the lights down. Things are different. The social responsibility aspect, not just of the event or of your venue in its own regard, but taking social responsibility on a bigger European or indeed global level, as well as at a local level, is going to be significantly important. And so too will be the way that we address the issues of food and beverage. Many, many things are changing. And what we need to do is make sure that we understand how to move forward. And we're going to set the scene inside IAC for you to formulate a discussion that allows you to become deeply involved in these issues and start to plan and think properly about how we move forward. 2022 is just around the corner. So to close out, let's just look at a final slide that I put together for you and just think about that in terms of that new normal once again. It's collaboration, ladies and gentlemen. It's inspiration. It's stimulation. It's purpose and indeed it's working with relevance overall as well. I hope that's given you a taste of things that are coming. And perhaps what I can do is use that collaborative question and throw it back at you right now. Do any of you have any feelings about what we should be doing or any questions from you right now about the subject matter that we'll be discussing? Anyone have any thoughts? Let me leave that open to you for just a second. I'm not that very small, by the way. You probably see I'm hiding behind the bar. If you looked at the size of the bar, I'm only a little person hiding away behind the bigger bar. Jochem and Evelyn are standing up there behind me. Um, I'm probably on my knees because of the amount of beer that I was drinking while we were preparing for this. Cheers, by the way. Any questions? Any thoughts? 
Jochen, perhaps I can call you back in then if I there's no one I coming think in Denmark directly. Denmark wants to say something, if I'm correct. Oh, yeah. looking forward. Hello, Denmark. Welcome. Denmark, Thanks. can you unmute yourself? Sorry, no, I thought it was because I was waving. Zoom. I was just saying goodbye to someone. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. You had a question, Denmark? No, I did, and I'm sorry. I'm just waving for saying goodbye to someone leaving the office. Sorry for that. <laughs> okay, what's the name of this person? <laughs> <laughs> so we can all say goodbye? Well, yes, she left. Already. Okay. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's sad. We <laughs> wave and say Sorry about that's... that. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me go back to you then, Jochen, if I may, and just think about what we should do differently overall. What's changed, or what do you think we should be doing differently? Have you drunk that whole beer already, by the way? <laughs> one, all, all those three. But let me pass Good this man. question Cheers. to one of our Close. bar guests. What do you think, Michael? Let me go again to Martin. Maybe he has the correct answer to this question. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? It's great to see you. Hi, Lovely Mark. to see you, Martin. And uh, hi, Mark. It's great to see you as well. Uh, like um, I think like IAC is bringing together the meeting industry uh, uh, in, in a great way. I think you, Michael, bring together all the participants in, uh, in, a, in a conference in a great way. So, um, yeah, I think, um, I think it, it, it is uh, uh, an interesting uh, future that we're looking at. Uh, and, and, and I wonder if, if, I can, um, if I can ask a question. Um, how do you see the the multi hub? Uh, because you've been in in, in in a few, I think, uh, at least in one I know of. Um, so how do you feel uh, about multi hub uh, uh, meetings uh, as a as a presenter? Because you can only be in one uh, at most. I think it's it's quite intriguing for me. You know, I think on average I used to do in the real live world pre pandemic probably about 180 conferences a year that I was privileged to speak at or facilitate at. You know, in the last year, in the last 12 months in particular, I've, I've gone down to about ooh, 18 events where I actually had some people around me and the rest of my business was 100% uh, in, the, uh, in the arena of Zoom or indeed Teams or other platforms, vMix and what have you. Um, Amazon Chime, I've used them all really. It's been quite incredible. And I think it. Uh, I think a lot of people struggle with with online material directly themselves, if they're not used to presenting. I thankfully can do both, so it doesn't particularly concern me. But I think the beauty of where we're going to now, with hybrid events coming through, as these online and hub events are going to be called, is that you always are able to create the live ability in every venue in which you're working with live audience around you. And because of the brilliance of technology, and I've got to thank Abbott for this because, you know, Abbott is one of the best organizations I've had the privilege of working with around the world. You know, when Abbott build a multi-hybrid event, we get everything for the audience that's live, but everybody else who's watching in from the other hubs really starts to enjoy and feel like they're a part of the overall event. And, you know, it's somewhere between, it's somewhere between watching CNN and getting good information or watching Netflix and being entertained. There's, there's corporate value in all of it. And I think that the beauty of this hub and spoke system now works incredibly well for me. And of course, I think one of the key things is that we've got to think about not only within social responsibility, but the issues, say, of carbon footprints. You know, I've, I've probably caused enough carbon footprint in my life to have Greta Thunberg never speak to me ever again. But, you know, I believe now that by doing what it is that we're doing, we can really bring you know, some really cool stuff together while still having all the European Knowledge Festival participants live in one area. Um, and I'd like to bring Mark back in on this, if I may, because, you know, obviously when you'd considered this, Mark, from an IAC point of view, um, you are a global family. Uh, you literally have a footprint all over the world. But I think that with the downscaling of the pandemic, and let me ask you that question, you know, was the hub thing quite important to you because of where we find ourselves right now before you'd ultimately look back to going live? Or is this a trend that lives on for the future, sir? 
It's a really interesting question because um, many of those on the call today would have been part of our Knowledge Festival the last time around in Belgium and sustainability was at the absolute heart of everything we did there. In fact, we achieved the gold standard, the first venue and organisation to do it with the Event Industry Council's Sustainable Event Certificate. So it was already very important for this community. Did we feel that we would um, move to a multi-location format in the future to extend that even further? Honestly, possibly not, not back then. But it has given us and this opportunity to do so. And the only reason I think why it wasn't a part of the solution prior to the pandemic is we didn't have the confidence in the technology and the production and the ability to do it the way we have now. We've been forced to embrace that transformation, as I say, from analog to digital. So I'm incredibly proud of the fact that we are going to place social responsibility and sustainability at the heart of what we do on October the 22nd. And Michael, you mentioned collaboration being at the heart of the success of this type of meeting. Well, I can say to you, we're very excited to have you as our facilitator and our MC and running our innovation lab, because what you will find is the IAC community is all about sharing ideas that matter. And Truly, this is an operate, opportunity for us to transform our businesses now and be further ahead of the competition, the regular hotels that really are not embracing this transformational change the way that IAC members are. So it's an exciting opportunity as we come together. And the only other facts that I will make is, apart from it reducing our global footprint from an attendee standpoint, you know, in terms of their travel, it's also an incredibly important opportunity as we are rebuilding our businesses, as we're rebuilding our staff in our businesses to allow opportunity for virtual attendance, virtual learning, where it just would not have been possible if it meant a trip for four days to another European country. So we need to be part of this social rebuilding of our talents. And part of those is by allowing virtual attendance as well as in-person attendance at the hubs in a more affordable and more environmentally friendly way. Can can I Lovely. Ask? And in a very accessible way, as you say. Hi, Mike. Go ahead. Can, yeah, I, I, can I ask a question? Because I, I see you guys, and, and you, you form a very distinguished panel of two. Uh, and, and you're very influential people. And um, so I, I'm going to abuse being able to talk to you now uh, by asking uh, my favorite question or you know about my favorite topic uh, networking I think is the is one of the key elements in uh, in organizing conferences and meetings people meeting each other learning from each other starting projects together so the networking the connecting among the people is for me has always been crucial how do you see the difference in what you're doing now for the future uh, IAC uh, uh, conference how do you see that uh, components the crucial components uh, in, in this conference. How is the networking organized? What do you see as different? What are the challenges for online or for multi-hub uh, networking? Martin. I'd uh, like Mark to comment right. on that it's first and foremost, if I may. But I, go ahead, Mark, sorry. Not at all, I'd be happy to. Um, of course, it's front and center uh, for us in terms of our planning and our design for the meeting because it was such a rich and important part of the previous IAC conferences, getting together and, you know, in part, this getting a beer together, um, the theming of today's session is about taking the edge off some of what we miss from coming together in a live environment. And undoubtedly, it, it is different, Martin. I think as we look forward, what I see the opportunity as being for IAC and our membership is still creating incredibly valuable, live, accessible, affordable events. But actually, as a precursor to being able to come to your live experience, you have that virtual attendance. So if this was a business, it would be your sales pipeline from your prospects to your customers. And so, you know, that fear of not, you know, fear of missing out, that fear of not attending live, or just the disappointment of not having that, that rich experience of meeting live should be one, hopefully, that encourage others to take that step, invest, get the support of their managers to attend. But 
I think at the heart of all of this is, again, I talked at the beginning about it's where you put your area of focus and you cannot um, ignore the fact that you need to design a conference day or event with um, collaboration and connections continually being addressed right the way through that unless you build that collaboration in that feeling that we're all at the same event even if we're not in the same location maybe even eating the same food at lunchtime or seeing the same flower on the center of the tables in the meeting rooms in all of those four or five or however many locations you have they're all small ways of making people feel together and um, i believe that we're getting better and better now at creating those experience rich um, events that have a digital element Whereas in the past, we all remember what it was like to be a virtual attendant, uh, attendee at a conference back five years ago. You were probably on a fixed camera um, at the back of a meeting room um, and just watching from a distance. Um, you know, you were a bystander. And that's not what we're going through at the moment. And I expect, Martin, you'll probably agree with me when I say we might not even be halfway to where we're going to get in terms of creating digitally experience rich um, events in the future we're still learning yeah i think just to add into that mark if i may that you know from a, a delegate perspective you will have live connections around you all the way through um, in your particular hub but you'll also be so well connected technologically to your friends and colleagues around the world it'll almost be like being in the room with them IAC has always been about collaboration, and that's been a firm driver, as I understood it when I was asked to come on board. We're all going to be working on exactly the same issues at exactly the same time and having conversations like this that bounce around countries and, and bounce around our hubs so that it feels like we're there. What we've got to remember is this will be the new normal into the future. You know, it's, it's not suggesting for a minute that large scale events will have to scale down. It's in fact that large scale events can get even bigger and better than ever before. And the ultimate beneficiary of that is going to be the, the delegate themselves. He or she will be walking away with an enriched, really high quality experience, both live and virtually. And again, it also offers an extension to IAC membership, really, in that particular regard, because, you know, in terms of maybe instead of just one venue securing the rights to a conference for one year and hoping to get it the next year in a different country or a different space, now we might be working together a lot differently going into the future where a lot more people share in the overall pie as well. So there's lots to come out of this. And as, as Mark says, the technology in its own regard, literally, um, you ain't seen nothing yet. And what you're doing from broadcasting out of Belgium at the moment, you know, it's it's so seamless. You know, we're all in the same space right now, just having a prelim conversation. You ain't seen nothing yet. Let me say that to the delegates watching this today. When this uh, goes live on October 22nd, this platform, you're going to see stuff that will literally blow you away live and virtually. And I can't wait for it personally. I think it's going to be great. Back to you guys in the studio. Yes. Um, thank you, uh, Michael. Thank you, Mark. Um, and maybe wanted to add to that as well. That in the past, um, uh, during the past crisis, I've never had so many international contacts that were really worth it. Uh, very interesting uh, online um, and digital collaborations that I had with uh, fellow um, meeting industry. Um, uh, experts all over the world but I was sleeping my own bed um, during all these encounters so that was um, an interesting experience um, Jochen back to you and to the bar and to the music maybe indeed Evelyn live is music music is life okay. I guess so let's bring on one other beer and one other song maybe let's start with a song okay live Online or hide, these are the fewer months. You need to contact people, but you really don't know how. Just call Abbott and not the cow. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for being with us. I hope to see you soon at um, IAX uh, European uh, Knowledge Festival in October. Um, and yeah, why not? Eh? Why not finish up with one more song, Jochen? Last one, one last more, but I need everybody to sing along. Okay. And 
life. Oh my God. Bravo!